<laughs> you um, you've been uh, you know pretty phenomenally successful. I'm very impressed, by the way. Uh, but I almost feel like you were too early. I feel like if you were 12 years old now, because you didn't have you know TikTok and YouTube, where you you would have been the you know the Nelk the Nelk boys, you would have been bigger than the oh, Paul brothers. Crazy. Right, like because you didn't have social yeah. media when you were doing all these stunts, you you did it yeah. in TV. You you know you, you did it before TV and then on TV. But it kind of well, helped them in a way, right? But, like, yeah, I bet. I, I bet, think you would have gone bet, viral dude, like nobody's business. I think you would have been TV no, for the amount of views that they get. I bet yeah. MTV pays more than a than you. Of course, of course, of course, it's you monetize as well. But I think fame wise, if you were a teen today with the tools they have and you had the same kind of gunslinger mentality of like doing stunts to attract attention, attract viewers and challenge yourself and have fun and have a blast in public. That model works today with people who I feel like have done like a fraction of the level of stunts that you've done. Uh, Do you think you're early? I don't know. No, look, I'll tell you what. It makes me tired just even <laughs> seeing, having you say that. It's just like, God, think about being on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and like, look, if, if I – even when I look at the world, right, forget about sort of being early or whatever it is, like an extraordinary exists. I've lived an extraordinary life, a handful of lifetimes, but I've never been happier than I am today talking to you. Because at the end of the day, there was so much like like angst and ambition and like I want to do something so big and I just kept trying and trying and my will to execute and my ambition and drive kept just breaking me down. Highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows where now I am just in this like perpetual straight state of like high growth in a clear direction, right? And, and inside that is complete happiness, right? And not saying that I didn't enjoy what I, I went through, but it was too much highs and lows and chaos and for, for, for what it's worth, right? Like it's, and it's all experience. And I really love my life way more at 47 than I did at 27 or 37, right? I, and that's really what your human mission is, right? At the end of the day, you want to live this peaceful, happy, effortless, like fulfilling life. That's really what you're chasing, right? You want a, a, a life of infinite abundance and love, right? And, and the only way you can actually get to that is through learning mastery of self. And that is mastery of your energy and all the things that give and take from it your time and ultimately your capacity, right? And and the only way you can master all of those is to really learn yourself at a high level and what you really love to do. And the difference is, is back then I was I had to do so many things that I didn't enjoy to feed that beast. Right. And and continue to find the next thing and constantly struggling with like, I gotta do another show and it's gotta be bigger. You know, it's like it's like that sort of thing where now everything's so much more controlled and done with purpose inside balance that you just enjoy every moment of the process right um but yeah could could i have done that on youtube no because i also had you know an eight hundred thousand dollar budget that allowed me to like you know go and do a deal that could you know rent out um you know, Six Flags so that I could flip a car ramp to ramp over the world's biggest skateboard that I designed uh, for that, a world record episode. That, that's how much that stunt cost? It was 800 Oh, no. Oh, shoot. I don't That stunt probably cost like all together. All of those were a few million dollars. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I mean, that's like <laughs> stunt teams and groups and like test cars and like, I mean, I, I was like, you know, then, then the day comes and what do you got to do? You got to flip a car. And you want to know what you want to know what happens on the day that you got to flip a car? You're like, this is the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> why am I even here? I have so much going on in my life. Like, why would I even put myself in this position to like flip this car? And then you flip the car, and it actually works. And now it's a Super Bowl commercial, and it's part of the 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 season premiere of season five of Fantasy Factory in this giant Chevy partnership. And you made millions of dollars, and now you're a legend. And and you're gonna all this stuff. It was genius and the best idea, but the the, <laughs> mo- the day of when you got to do it, it's like it's not even that cool. This is so dumb. You know what I mean? That's basically all of those, uh, all the stunts that I did in that era. It would always be like, this is the worst idea. It's not even funny. And then when it was over, I'd be like, I'm I'm a legend. I'm a legend. Earlier, you said that you track trends now and you and you start at the end and you work backwards. 
what trends interest you at the moment? What uh, what business opportunities are are intriguing to you? If you had a little bit more, like even if you aren't going to do it, but you wish you had more time, and it's just kind of on the side, and you're like, this is this this interests me. I think someone should pounce on this opportunity. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but it, I'm I'm interested. Um, to to for clarity purposes here now. Now I have a business that builds businesses, right? So okay. I I build. Uh, you know, five to six businesses a year, right? And although I've, I've, you know, I've kind of like really pushed into all the builds I'm doing at the end of the year here are all in the beauty beauty industry, uh, adaptogenic um, um, topicals, uh, water filter system. Saw a real opportunity and and sort of. Um, in the beauty space of like how important like water is and how how many chemicals there are and, and when you shower but then you go and spend all this money on your hair and makeup and uh, skincare but you wash yourself in chlorine uh, so found a real opportunity to develop a, a real innovative sort of shower purification system and 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 water filter system for beauty um, and, you know, eat, really looking at superfoods and plant-based, um, the sustainable beauty products is a big opportunity in, in, in that sort of space. You know, we launched a nootropic, um, a footwear or a nootropic, um, um, and, and adaptogen, uh, plant-based, um, bar and drink mix and coffee mix line this year. That's been really successful. We looked at, you know, the, the three billion dollars in market share between Uggs. Uh, Crocs and Birkenstocks and created what we consider the more the the sleeker ugly ugly shoe the pretty <laughs> ugly shoe uh, and Luso Cloud that we launched this year that's that or last year that that really has ridden this wave of sort of uh, comfort this comfort wave and casual wave in the comfort footwear world that we think is going to be uh, on track to do really be really big too for because to me at the end of the day. Like what's happening in a market is important, um, and it's it's going to be where you live and die, right? You you too early, or you know, in the case of Ultracast, you know, I launched this company that was a a a live three hundred and sixty um, a live three hundred and sixty and VR video platform uh, that put three hundred and sixty videos all over the world, and where you could jump on your phone and travel all over the world and be in, in different bars and, and clubs and all these different things, like right on the conversions of live Instagram and, and live content and live streaming and sort of VR coming in together. And then what happened to VR? Like ne oh, just died. Nothing. Right. And it's it. like, <laughs> I was like, I, and what did it end up being? like the new 3D TV, right? And so 360 video became like the new, like the 3D TV, right? And so even though I built, I got it right on the wave and like it was super innovative with an amazing CEO who once the company went out of business, built and took a company public in like nine months. But I'm, um, that that fails, right? So you're, you're trying to time markets and look at trends and all of that. But at the end of the day, like you, you got to get a little bit lucky. So you want to be in the right place, white space and an opportunity that's in, investable. Um, there's so many nuance to a white space and where opportunity is. I can tell you um, from someone that's built 17 companies in the last five years that the, the greatest lesson I had in years two and three uh, was founder market fit. You know what I mean? Like where yeah. it, it's like when the, 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 the the biggest red flag you will ever hear is when somebody comes from uh you know one industry and wants to be in another because this one's so much easier right, right. this one's it's the margins over here it's the shelf stability over here it's though there's not size it's like they all have a position based off of how hard their particular industry's uh sort of structure is and they're all hard they're all hard and you don't want to invest it, build companies with people that have to learn the industry as they go. Right. And I think that's, that's, I would get caught in seeing great opportunities and ideas and build with really relentless, well uh, experienced founders uh, who get crushed in the learning curve of trying to learn and understand a new industry. It's something that I've really it's very hard for me to build a company with somebody um, that's getting into a an industry for the very first time. Rob, we've we've had like billionaires on. We typically don't do do guests. We it's typically just Sean and I. But we've had billionaires. We've had you know Gary Vaynerchuk was on recently. He was he was really fascinating. We've had some famous people. We've had all types of people on here. You might be 
the most interesting that we've ever had. Um, you're definitely the most surprising, you know, and I hopefully this isn't you don't take this the wrong way, but I, I judged you based off of just as a skateboarding fan and what I knew about you on TV. Obviously, I knew you were the slick ass businessman and you always had some cool shit going on, but you are way more dialed in than I ever would have imagined. And you might be one of the most interesting people I've ever spoken to. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think you're my new hero. Yeah, I, I this, this has been amazing. <laughs> Look, I, I, I could tell by the questions you asked me um that that it was coming from that sort of lens and i thought to myself man let me let me feed this guy kind of the uh the angle and the evolution of where i'm operating at right you've evolved like a motherfucker is what you know and it's and, and think about it too it's extraordinarily concise and clear right because it's like i constantly am seeking clarity so i'm always operating from a place of intention and then i'm i'm considering myself to have an evolutionary mindset where it's like how how do how can i purposely keep evolving and evolving and evolving with purpose in a, in a singular direction. And one of those is like literally human optimization and being happy as could be, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, but no, I, I thank you. And, and I appreciate it. Cause you guys also had me do work, right? You guys said, Hey, can you write an agenda of what you want to talk about on today's show? I'm like, these guys are like having me write an agenda to be a guest on their show. And I wrote out an agenda and we never even co covered any of the subjects. Can you come back? <laughs> we didn't cover it yeah. because you Look, blew our mind early on, and it you was kinda, just, yeah. you, I could have took the first three things you said and said, "Okay, I, I have two hours here where all I need to do is just let you expand on that." Because if I'm listening to this and somebody says something interesting, there's nothing more annoying in the world than the guest going back to their pre preset agenda and not. Yeah. Asking about the really interesting thing the guy just said. And so yeah. we had to do it. And look, it goes back to what you said about building towards the end. Yes, we had you planned, just like I planned my exit. But like what you said was, you don't really know what's going to happen in between. Yeah. Yeah. And look, even with all this, this, this planning and structure, I, I don't let it, I'm not controlled by that calendar. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah. still allow myself to like, but the beauty of the system is I could just shut down three days and everything continues to move and then picks back right up when I get there. You know, e even as I operate my life, I, with the same group that helped me develop my system for the Deer Deck machine and my, my business creation system, like I had them develop my life system, right? And, and I have this, this 50 page document called the rhythm of existence that's managed by my two assistants and my chief of staff. <laughs> and it's basically the operating system for my entire life, right? And so that, that allows all aspects, whether it's from my food to my haircuts to, to like how I deal with birthdays <laughs> and how I deal with all these different things is put into the system that's managed that does what? It's automated and gives me back more capacity to be able to do more, be more present with my wife and kids, be more present uh, when I'm working, be more focused, be able to get more done because I keep adding more and more automation and optimization to my life that allows me to just live and do the things I love to do, which then gives me more energy to be more successful, more clear, have more intention and push things further and farther along. You know? would, would you be willing to come on again and, and talk more about like pretty much everything you've discussed and also the things that we've planned? Because this is I, this is going to be a home run. Yeah, look, you know what I'd like to do? I'd probably like to like send you all of my I'll send you all the stuff that I do so you could read it and see it and have yeah. like, OK, here's yeah. a life conversation of how Rob lives and runs his life optimization, then send you all of my business stuff, including my machine method and how I, I run my businesses through a discovery diligence build um, uh uh, scale launch and scale phase yeah. and my seven core capabilities of business and brand product uh, <laughs> like media a, marketing sales sounds like you have a new product coming 